welcome back. Hello, welcome back to Nintendo Nostalgia. My name is Chris Warren, and I'm really excited to be your host today. Also joining me is my good friend and co-host, Joshua Taylor. Josh, how are you? Not too bad. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Uh, Ryan and Jacob won't be with us today, but that's okay. Uh, today we'll be talking about Wario Land 4. This is a game that Jess and I really like a lot, and we wanted to make sure that we had a little episode for you. But before we get into that, let's get into what we are Radical Rexing about. So, Josh, why don't you start us off? What have you been Rexing about lately? All right, let's get, kind of get the obvious one out of the way here. We have E3 coming up. Um, when we're recording this episode, um, it's actually next week. But uh, when this one comes out, we should be heading straight into it. So definitely looking forward to that. I'll be heading to, to Indiana to hang out with a few of the other guys there. Um, so that that just adds to it. And I'm, I'm hoping for some good stuff. We have a whole other episode um, about our predictions and stuff for that. So I won't go too much into it. But definitely looking forward to that. Um, another thing this week comes out on friday is that game garage builder which i think i said that right this time um and i'm kind of excited about that kind of uh wanting to try it out with my daughter and i usually like getting creative with that sort of stuff i know it looks kind of simple but i think it could be fun um i've been poking a little bit at like unity anyway um my computer doesn't like it very much but you know just trying to at least if nothing else watch some videos on it and get an idea of how it works so um it's kind of cool learning that sort of thing um, and again, I just like making goofy stuff. Uh, and another quick thing, actually, I'm sorry, I'm actually like reading off a list here because I did not want to forget this. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of randomly picked up a game. Um, I think it was near the end of last week, and it is Kaze and the do, 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 I forget something mask. <laughs> yeah, like four <laughs> masks or sacred masks or something. Uh, Something along those lines. But anyhow, it, it's a really good one that I feel like nobody's really been talking about. And I think it came out in like April. Um, and it's it was 30 bucks, and I got the, the box for it for that price. Same price as I think it was digital. And it plays a lot like a Donkey Kong Country game. Um, the main character feels a lot like Dixie, really. And it, it honestly, it ob obviously plays a lot of homage to Donkey Kong Country. But it does it without feeling like a cheap, copy to me so i mean if you like that sort of stuff you want a good platformer go check that one out it's not super long like i already pretty much 100 percented it minus like some extra stuff like uh time trials and things like that but it's 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 pretty good um yeah i picked yeah. that up too it's um it's yeah a lot of people aren't talking about it uh yeah. oh it's the, the and the wild mass i never would have ah, okay. <laughs> remember <Okay>. that <laughs> but um yeah i mean uh, it's just a really great indie, and um, imitation is the finest form form of flattery, or whatever the saying is. And yeah. it seems to be a, a really great um, fan made version of a, a Donkey Kong Country game. And you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, this game kind of leans into the great formula that Donkey Kong Country already had established. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool because we're not getting a Donkey Kong Country game, or maybe we will. At some point, I don't know what's going to happen with this rumor, but it's pretty cool that someone's doing some type of Donkey Kong Country game. We have enough Metroidvanias, so it's nice to have yeah. just a straight-up good platformer. Um, cool. Did you finish it? Yes. Um, I, I collected everything except for, like I said, I think it was some some of the time trial stuff. I've, I'm going back and doing it. And like you yeah. can go through each stage, and you get a little crown next to it if you don't get hit at all. Which it doesn't really go into the percentage. Neither of those do, but I've been doing it anyway, just kind of going back and yeah. seeing what I can do. Just if nothing else, for an excuse to play it, because I, I kind of didn't want it to be over. Right. Uh, it does get pretty difficult at times. It's mm -hmm. it feels more like the Super Nintendo DKCs than like the retro made ones. But I mean, I, I love both of those anyway, so right it works out pretty well. Do you think you might even prefer Kaze over? maybe one or two of the past Donkey Kong Country games, or it's just like its own thing and not perhaps not even as good? It's kind of hard to say. I mean, I, I say they're a lot alike, but at the same time, like, I'm saying like a lot. <laughs> with, with the retro and specifically Tropical Freeze, I feel like the levels are a lot longer and mm. require it requires a little more dedication where like something like this, is a little easier to go back to like in two years you're like i really like that game i'm gonna go through it real quick and it's not yeah. that big of a of a time sink 
so to speak. So it just kind of depends on what you're in the mood for. It's not as complicated. Um, kind of feels like the Super Nintendo ones, like I said, and they're not super long either. So yeah, cool. All right, yeah, I am. I did get it, but of course, right when I got it, I started my class, so just haven't really had time for it. Um, that's cool. Um, right. Did you want to uh, talk about anything else that's been going on? That's about all, really. I guess with I, I guess since you mentioned like your class there, I was taking some of those Unity. Not Unity. Well, actually, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Udemy courses, one on Unity in it. I'm not <laughs> sure how it's going to hold out just yet, mostly because of my laptop and my short attention span. Um, yeah. Sometimes studying on your own is really hard. But um, I, I'm still at least picking up some of it. I'm wanting to focus more on the maybe the writing sort of thing and just whatever I can do to get my way in there to get my foot in the door, so to speak. So. Yeah, that's cool. Putting a Hopefully... lot of thought into that stuff this week. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, make a little schedule for yourself. It's really hard to commit to those things. I totally feel you. Um, but hopefully with the Game Builder Garage or whatever it's called, um, hopefully that gives you some of the skills that you might need for the class. So even though you started the class before you'll get the game, maybe <laughs> once you start playing the game, you'll be like, mm, you know what, maybe I'm like really in the mood for this class now and you want to get into it. So. I know that's kind of silly and basic, but but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hoping maybe that kind of at least gets you in that mindset. Um, right. I, I think even my daughter can appreciate that at her age. So. Yeah. It could be good. Yeah, exactly. I'm really curious to see like how well this game will be received. It, it could be a huge hit, potentially, or it could just be another thing that unfortunately gets forgotten, like Labo or whatever. So um, yeah. I hope it does well. But it's a great idea, and I'm just glad that it exists. So um, I'm actually going to be picking that up, too, because uh, GameStop has that, uh, whatever it's called, the pro membership or whatever, and I foolishly <laughs> signed up for it. Even though, like, if you're if you're smart about it, you definitely get more than your money back. But um, I've accumulated, like, $15 worth of, like, a, a discount, so I'll be able to get the game for 15 bucks. So I figure I might as well spend it on that. Uh, yeah. Well, while I'm already talking about myself, um, I'll talk to you about what I've, what I've been racking about. Um, so, yeah, I, last time I talked to you about uh, me watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier, so I finished that yesterday. It was great. What are you going to say? Sorry, sorry. That totally, I totally forgot you reminded me there. I, yeah. I'm, I must be in a very talkative mood. No, uh, I, I started Loki today, actually, so oh. I was really looking forward to that one. It and? might... Uh, well, it's only the first episode, but so far, like, it's first impressions. I might, like, get the best out of, like, the three Marvel series that started this year. Wow. So, I'm not sure yet, but, that, and, yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is pretty good, too. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Because I, I think IGN released a review for Loki, and it got, like, a seven, which really? is surprising. Yeah, but, um, I mean, you know, these types of episodes or shows are, like, really subjective. You either, like, love them, hate them. Or obviously somewhere in between, which IGN seems to be at. But um, yeah, like I don't even I'm, I'm not trying to like think of these shows like with like a number or rating. Like I'm just trying to watch them and enjoy them. You know, if I don't like it, I don't like it. And then I move on. Um, but yeah, I really like I'm very impressed by Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm surprised that it didn't get talked about even more. I feel like um, the first show. What am I thinking of? Oh, I guess. Uh, yeah, true. I mean, they're so different. Um, oh, yeah. But. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just really like Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The last two episodes were awesome. Like, uh, they really thought long and hard about the story, and I just thought it was such an awesome way to end it. And, uh, yeah, I'm very impressed. And I did start the first, like, two episodes of WandaVision because I was just in such a Marvel mood and uh, very cool ideas. Um, it is. A little, little corny. <laughs> and uh, I have a low it's tolerance kind of the point, corny. though. Right. It, absolutely. It, yeah, especially at first. Trust me, it 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 changes over time. Okay, cool. I do like when it there's like those dramatic moments too. So, uh, like sprinkled into the episode so that it kind of takes you out of the whole shtick that they're going for with the the sitcoms. But very clever idea. Um, I'm only like two episodes in, I think. So looking forward to finishing out uh, the rest of that show. And I actually <laughs> randomly turned on Wolverine and the X-Men. I don't know if you ever heard of that show, but it was like, I, I don't know when it came out. I'm guessing like 2010-ish or something. Like, obviously, I was too old for it. I mean, quote, unquote, too old. Here I am watching it <laughs> 10 years after it premieres. But 
You um, were too old. Now you're not. Yeah. Now I'm That's extremely how that works. old. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I cycled all the way back. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like a great X Men cartoon show. And if you grew up liking uh, the '90s X Men show or like X Men Evolution, this is right up there with them. It's really, really good. So. Um, yeah, very surprised by that because I'm not really a cartoon person. I'm not really a superhero person that much, but like it's nice to kind of go back and you know get some nostalgic feels with that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, haven't really played games lately. Just uh, the game that we'll be talking about today. Um, my class. I don't know why, but like whenever I take a class, I'm just not really in the mood for games. So just one of those things. But I, I think I'm gonna have to drop my. Uh, second class for the summer just because like I really need a break this is getting ridiculous so um, yeah so uh, other than that um, just been going to like the beach and hanging out at like beach towns with some friends and yeah we had dinner the other day outside and it was just so nice uh, so it's great to be back to normal life or uh, slowly getting there at least so yeah um, that's about it though um, so we don't have any Facebook comments for today's topic, and we don't have any uh, voicemails either, so we can just jump right into our topic, which is Wario Land 4. So, Wario Land 4, why don't we uh, give a little bit of background, and then we'll talk about our nostalgia for the game. Um, so I'll just give you some quick facts. Uh, this game was developed by Nintendo R&D 1. It's part of the Wario series, obviously, which is a uh, group of games that are basically platformers. Uh, this particular game came out November 19th, 2001, which is really interesting because I believe that's like pretty much when the GameCube was released. So pretty interesting release time, but I guess, um, you know, they're not really competing too much, the Game Boy Advance uh, games and the GameCube uh, audience. Um, it got really good reviews, lots of eights and nines, and it actually lost uh, Game of the Year to Advance Wars, which is crazy to think about how long ago Advance Wars came out. And also Conquer. Um, Conquer came out during this time, apparently, too. It's just wild. So, yeah. Um, any other background details you'd like to share, Josh? No, I mean, outside of that, it also popped up in the Nintendo 3DS Ambassadors program in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, it's also on the Wii U Virtual Console. came out in 2014. And I think that's it, actually. Yep. So it's one of the few games from that era that are actually still available that is still available if you wanted to get this game and you know you might be interested in it after we talk about it you can still get it on the wii u virtual eShop. Um, i'm not really sure how the ambassador program uh, works but it's pretty um safe to say that if you haven't gotten it through that you probably won't <laughs> um so uh josh this is the fourth game in the wario series did you play any of the other ones I did after I played 4. I okay. don't believe I did before this. I played Mario Land 2 before this, but um, I think this is my first Wario Land game. Okay, so you went from uh, Super Mario Land 2 to eventually Wario Land 4. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, for me personally, this was my first... Actually, no, it wasn't my first Wario game. My first one was Wario World for GameCube. And um, I don't know, as a kid, I really liked it. I haven't gone back to it since, but um, I was really intrigued. I liked the weirdness and atmosphere and stuff. So um, for me, Wario Land 4 was this game that I didn't get until much, much later. I think like uh, about 10 years after it was released. And it was just this game I always wanted. It, I saw it in Nintendo Power and I was like, it looks so weird and cool. And like, I just love the weird graphics and the strangeness and 
just how odd it is and like the sense of humor that it has and it was this game that i always wanted and it's one of the games that i think of the most when i think of the game boy advance and um as we talk a little bit more about this game i think it'll be pretty clear as to why that is um so josh talk to us about your nostalgia for this game yeah i see like you said it came out in um november of 2001 I don't remember exactly when I got it. I know it was around then. Um, But if that's like the year the GameCube came out, I know I was on a big GameCube kick. You know, I mean, I almost still am. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, that was really the focus. However, I do remember playing this pretty well. Um, And I've I've gone back to it a little bit on and off since then. Um, Now, for whatever reason, I do. We were just talking about this before recording. I do seem to, like, get through the first world, and it's great. Then I'm kind of fall off the boat it's a little long it takes a little brain work to get through sometimes i'm just a little too lazy to deal with it i guess but no i i do remember putting a lot of time into it i I do remember beating it back in the day um it was uh, you know i'd always always been a mario fan this came out like when i started middle school and honestly like without going into my life story (laughs) this was a very rough time for me um as our, our family was going through a lot of stuff and I just simply remember playing this, um, like, a good bit on the side. Um, I remember putting in my headphones with it and turning up that main menu or main theme or whatever. Um, it, it was one of those earliest memories, too, of, as goofy as it sounds, any sort of vocals um, yeah. in a game, especially, like, in a music track. Because uh, Nintendo still doesn't really do that a whole lot. And, uh, you know, you could almost couldn't understand it but (laughs) it was just cool that it was there i don't know it it felt different um and again just starring wario it it wasn't as happy (laughs) it sounds a little depressing but it wasn't as bright and cheery as like the mario stuff you'd be used to Mm -hmm. um and it just maybe it was the right game at the right time um it's weird i it was definitely quite different from anything else I'd seen up to that point, and it still kind of is in its own way. Um, and maybe we'll get more into that, but there's definitely a lot of little weird things about this one. Yeah, absolutely. I think if there's one word that we could use to describe this game, it's weird. <laughs> but I would say overall in a good way. Um, yeah. So as for myself, when we're talking about you know our nostalgia for it, you know, I mentioned a few things before, but for me, you know, I, I kind of mentioned this, but it was kind of like a standout launch title for the Game Boy Advance. Um, I will say the Game Boy Advance had like a really impressive launch lineup for like its first year or so. And it was just this really enticing device that was, you know, so fascinating at the time because seeing graphics like what the Game Boy Advance was capable of at the time was so crazy to take these types of games with you on the go was just insane and it's it's crazy to really look back and and think of that because you know obviously today these graphics are not too impressive but in their own way they're still very charming we'll talk about that in a bit but um this was you know the yeah like i mentioned before I played Wario World first on GameCube, and then I came to this. So, like Josh said, uh, you know, we were in pretty similar boats with like just being really um, lustful <laughs> for the GameCube, and anything that was for the GameCube was just so enticing. And um, eventually, after the GameCube died out and the Wii came around, I was just like, mm, I don't know, something about the Game Boy Advance is really interesting to me. So I started to get really into the Game Boy Advance library, and that's when I rediscovered Wario, uh, what is this, Wario Land 4. So, but it was weird for me as a kid, like, even though it looked really good, there was still something kind of off-putting about this game. It was, like Josh said, it was very weird, um, but in a way it kind of was like a more mature weird. I was kind of like into more clean games and less weird ones. You know, I liked my Mario's and my Kirby's and stuff like that. Things that are very cut and dry and clean and stuff like that. But for Wario, it was just so twisted and demented. And I just wasn't ready for that as like a 12 or 13 year old. But as you get older, it's just like, hmm, that's pretty cool. It's like kind of creative and inventive and different. Um, so I, it's, it started to really entice me. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as my nostalgia goes. But I do remember 
uh, you know, playing the game and just really enjoying it. It's just like a great platformer and it's it, it holds up really well today, actually. Anytime I go back to it, because I haven't really stopped playing it ever since I got it. I played I don't know, like once a year or so. Um, it holds up very well. It's a timeless game. And um, I've been playing it on the uh, what's it called? The Game Boy Player. This is a game that yeah. would be great for the Switch. It looks great on the TV. It looks great on the small screen, too. So I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, next thing I wanted to talk about is kind of like the personality and the style of the game. Um, Josh, can you kind of like describe to us like your interpretation of its of the game's like personality and style? Gosh, that's that's harder to describe than you would think it should be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you know Wario, like you know Wario, like he he loves money. He doesn't really care about anybody else but himself. Um, and, and you see that like in the little cutscenes, and I don't want to give away anything at the end, but you you know you see it there as well. Um, but where do I even begin? I know it's <laughs> the, hard. The, the theming, the the whole location is this big is the Golden Pyramid, I believe it's called. It's this big like ancient temple looking thing, and you jump into these different warp panel looking whatevers, and it takes you to different parts of the world. So there's like um, this old jungle. Um, there's this factory. There's all kinds of different themes. It's not like it's not real traditional in its theming, really. Like it's not like you know your grassland and then the desert and then the water level and then the lava level or whatever. It's it's got some really weird stuff in there, um, and and that kind of carries over to the bosses and stuff. It's just this weird. It's almost like think of Mario sixty four, at, at least the setup where you go into a castle and it takes you to different worlds, but like a little more. Well, for one, a little more linear, but also just a little more twisted in a weird, strange, unique Wario-like way. Um, if you've played any Wario games, you might kind of know what I'm talking about with that. Um, even some of the weirdness of the WarioWare games yeah. is similar to the weirdness in in this, so to speak. Um, if you unlock... So one thing you can unlock is like some weird music tracks. Uh, there's a CD in like every level. Um, you don't hear about CDs much anymore. <laughs> but anyhow, when you pick one of those up, and they are pretty hard to find. You can take them to this thing in the temple and listen to them. And they're not really like tracks that are used in the level, so to speak. They're just these weird, like offbeat, sometimes just really atmospheric tracks. Hmm. And I, you, you might have to look them up on YouTube or something if you get the chance, because I don't yeah. know how else to describe them. They, some of them are just really strange, almost haunting sounding. <laughs> And in all of them, they're all a little bit different. There's just like a weird little slideshow of pictures that kind of goes in the corner of just weird nonsense. Wow. Um, like a cat or like this baby doll that like sticks its tongue out. It's almost <laughs> creepy. Yeah. Like some of it is borderline creepy, but it it works in its own strange way. Right. Like, a, again, kind of like you, there's certain strange levels like i'm like at, i don't really get it but for some reason with this like it i found it more intriguing <laughs> i guess yeah. than anything it was almost like a good i don't want to say scared but you know you can you can be scared in a bad way and then you can kind of be creeped out and be fun yeah <laughs> if that makes sense yeah it's like eerie in like a fun way i guess but um yeah that's it, it is very hard to describe the personality of this game but um, I think that what this game has to offer is very different from a lot of other uh, platformers, um, even some of the better ones, because this game has a feature that not a lot of other games have, which is personality everywhere. Everywhere in this game, there's just, like what Josh said, there's just so much style and personality and weirdness to it. And I just think that's such a great asset to what this game has it's not just a you know wario game and not just a platformer that happens to feature wario wario is the dna of this game and his weirdness is ingrained into every detail that you find in this game i just think that's so interesting and, and very uncommon to find um but it's not just the weirdness it's also like it has a sense of humor to it too it's pretty funny and like it's kind of like a dark humor too it's kind of like disturbing and funny yeah. but um i like that and i mean i can't think of any other games that are like that except maybe some indies but i can't imagine them doing it as well as as these wario games um but yeah it's just it's a really fun 
extra feature that you find throughout all these levels. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the gameplay, because I think that in addition to the style and the personality that this game has to offer, I think the gameplay itself is really interesting as well. Um, it's not just a simple platformer. There's a little bit more to it. Um, so I try to think about it and kind of break down what makes the gameplay a little bit different. So for each level, you have like a little bit of a routine that you have to uh, go through, and some things are optional. But you obviously want to get to the end of the level, but also along the way you want to find as many of these gem pieces as you can, um, these like jewel pieces, you want to find four of them. And you also want to get as many jewels as you can to make like the most amount of money, because I guess that gets you a lot of points. And um, you also want to find these little extras and bonuses along the way. Josh mentioned this CD, um, and that's definitely one of the bonuses. And they're very well hidden. I don't think I found like any of them. I was looking through my old save. I don't think I have any of the CDs found. Um, they're very, very well hidden. And um, but something that's really interesting about all of these Wario games, and correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, because maybe not all of them do this, um, but I think most of the land games, at least. Um, have it where when you go to the end of the level, you need to go back to the starting point. And it's this rush against time to go back to the starting point. And your journey along the way is very different from the journey that you took getting to the end of the level. So you go to the end of level and then you got to go back. But the going back part is timed and it's that it adds this like sense of pressure and stress to it which wasn't in the original, you know, getting to the end level. That's not timed and not as stressful. You can kind of like have, uh, you're, you're able to explore. But when it's timed, you can't explore. I mean, you can, but like you're under a lot more pressure to do so. Um, so Josh, yeah, what do you think about the, the gameplay? Um, is this something that interests you and something you'd like to see more of? Yeah, I mean, uh, Wario Land has sort of always stood on its own in the way the style that goes at like a 2d platformer um really nothing can hurt you um if it does like you might lose some money or it, it might do some sort of weird status effect to you like you can turn into a zombie for a minute and it slows you down like you can't jump or hardly or, or anything like that um some stuff you might need to do like that on purpose for your benefit to get to certain areas um but yeah it the main focus is grabbing treasure, um, really exploring, um, using Wario's strength, like he can bust through boulders, um, he can pick up heavy stuff, things like that. Feels a little bit different than like a normal Mario 2D platformer, so to speak. Um, yeah. If you've played any of the Wario lands, though, at least the first like three, or maybe the Virtual Boy one for that matter, it's it's a lot like those, but I feel like just a step up. Like it's it's a good evolution of those, um, yeah. or if you played Shake It, that one you don't hear much about. It's very much like that. The same idea minus the, the shaking. Right. Except I don't think now that I think of it, I feel like Shake It didn't have any transformations. Am I wrong about that? It's been a while since I played that one. I cannot right? remember. I think yeah, it's it's one of those games where like I feel like we all played it, but we just don't remember it too much. Yeah. Which is weird because it has such a beautiful art style, but it's it just like, I don't remember it at all, but whatever. We'll get to it for that episode. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, Josh, you brought up a good point with like the transformations and like the body modifications that you um, encounter throughout your travels. And it's really interesting because some of them are like complete transformations, like kind of like a, a power up with Mario, with, with what Mario might have. So the zombie one is really interesting. That's like where you... I guess you like go through the level below you. Um, if you if there's like a metal grate below you, you kind of can go through that, which is interesting. But it's like it's weird because sometimes getting those transformations are advantageous so that you can get to these areas where you couldn't before. But sometimes there's like a character that like forces you to be in that transformation, and it's kind of like a pain in the butt. So it's up to you to kind of decide if you want that transformation or not. Um, like there's some levels where like there's a bat that turns you into a bat as well. <laughs> and it's like, you know, do you want to go through the level without that transformation? Is that your goal? Because there's something that you can only access by, you know, your regular Wario form. 
Or do you want to get the bat transformation and like have him touch you to become a bat to get to like a higher level? So you kind of have to like decide that as you go through it. And I, I think it adds to the replayability of the game because you're not just going to know everything and complete everything in one run. It's a great game to go back to and kind of rediscover old things. There's just there's so much in each stage. Um, and yeah, there's there's so many different transformations. There's the, the zombie one that Josh mentioned. Uh, you become really obese <laughs> uh, when like some guy throws like a lava ball at you or something. And uh, there's like a spring one where you just jump really high, but you have one chance to do it. Um, so you have to like really line it up perfectly, jump really high and nail that landing or else you got to start over again. So that was interesting. And uh, one of my favorite ones was the bee sting one where you get stung by a bee and you kind of mm -hmm. swell up and you, you know, kind of turn into a Wario balloon in a way. And that just opens up a whole swath of different areas. Um, and another part of Wario's moveset that I think is really interesting is like the rolling down and charge parts. So like there's these diagonal ramps where you have to like press down on them and crouch and that'll make you roll into a ball and that like momentum will make you like break blocks and you know find new areas and stuff and uh similar to the charge which is like you just press r i think and then move and you just yeah. you know charge into blocks and break stuff and find areas in that way so um yeah it's a pretty it's it's not like a crazy move set or anything but they just utilize it really well and and uh i think the transformations are particularly really really interesting because they make you think um and uh kind of like what you said josh is that there's a lot of different like secret parts in the game like um there's a lot of hidden areas too so it does benefit you to go back um do you remember those bonus rooms where you have to like throw that guy at the block <laughs> to get the jewel yeah yeah so I, I can't remember if there's a certain amount on each stage i was just looking his name up because i knew it was something weird i'm gonna try to say it please I do think it's <laughs> Ari -wo Shatane Hakasi. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he looks like a little professor guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he's always in these bonus stages, and he's always looking around with a little magnifying glass, and you can just smack him, pick him up, and, yeah. like, throw him over something to hit a block so you can get to a diamond. There's always these big diamonds locked right. away in these bonus stages. And it's just it's mostly a way to up your, your treasure, so to speak. Yeah, um, like your score or something. Yeah, and it does, like, you, you can use, you might be bringing this up later some, but uh, you can use that money later for to help you with boss fights. Um, oh, if I you didn't know that. that. Like oh, the, like for buying items? Yeah, yeah, okay. well, what, what you do, you take the money, and then you can go to the, this is going to sound way more confusing than it really is, but there's a little minigame area you can get to at the end of each world before the boss. Yeah, <laughs> and okay. there's three different mini games you can pick from. I, I always, I always love the baseball, and I got, I, I like baseball anyway. But I just got really good at that. There is a, it's Wario's Home Run Derby, so it's real simple. I mean, like that one is just like it, it looks like an old kind of 2D baseball game where all you do is just swing the bat at the right time. You hit the A button at the right time, and it looks like if you do it right, it'll look like it breaks your screen, and you get a point. And every so many points, you get a coin, you get a big, uh, I think it's a Wario coin or something. And you use those coins to buy bigger items for the boss coming up if you want to. You don't have to do it at all. Um, the other games, one is the Wario Hop. It's like a auto run thing where you have to jump over stuff. And there is Wario's Roulette where it's like different faces, I think. Like there's a nose and an eye and a mouth and all this. You have to line those up correctly at a certain speed. So three pretty fun little games um that can um in the long run get you help for the bosses because there's all these there's an item shop that's ran by a guy that looks suspiciously like mr game and watch um, <laughs> and he'll sell you all this different stuff that will go into the boss as you go in with it and will knock off a certain amount of its health for you just from the start which oh, wow. sounds kind of like you know you might be making it too easy on yourself but some of these bosses also, if you, the faster you beat them, the more treasure you get. There's oh. all these treasure chests in the background. And if you start taking too long, they will just start disappearing. Huh. Oh, I didn't even notice that. And then okay. you're just out of luck if you let that happen. So. Huh. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. Cool. Wow, that really adds like a whole new 
Yeah, it, game, it, it, it sounds okay. complicated and it's kind of layer after layer, but it, when you're really when you're in the game, it's really not that big of a deal. Like you yeah. can even skip over all that if you want to. But I do believe there is like a good or a better ending, and you know more stuff to collect if you're into that sort of stuff. If if you really put your all into every aspect of it. Yeah, interesting. So there's like a little bit of strategy when it comes to the bosses. That's interesting. Um, cool. Um, let's talk about the uh, graphics. I definitely want to talk about the, the bosses in just a little bit, but yeah. um, let's talk about the graphics and just how the game looks, really. So what are your thoughts on like the visuals and the graphics of the game? Do you think uh, the graphics look good? Yeah, like you were mentioning earlier, I think it looks great. I think, I think a lot of Game Boy Advance games honestly look pretty good. I, I think the hardest... Uh, the worst thing about them, like, if, if you're playing more of sort of an emulated version of them, so to speak, like through the Wii U or or something like that, I feel like they always look dark on the TV. Sometimes, like, even through the Game Boy Player I've used on, on my GameCube. Oh. Uh, I, it, I feel like all of them are always a little dark. So it's as much as I want to see them, like, on the Switch and, you know, up or whatever, I, I hope they could fix that. And maybe it's just those ROMs or whatever it is aren't the best but other than that i mean i I think it looks great it's one of those that unlike some games like especially some early 3d games that don't look great nowadays i I don't feel like this is gonna look bad really ever you know it's it's just one of those where it's it's safe but it it does what it needs to well yeah totally harmless but there's just something about you know sprites and that 16-bit look that's just so timeless. And there's a reason why there's been a resurgence of those types of games, or at least games that look like that, over the past few years, because they just hold up so, so well. Um, and it's really interesting. And also uh, equally interesting that like N64 games don't really age well. Like As a kid, I thought what I was looking at was the future. <laughs> and mm-hmm. like this is it. This is what games are going to look like forever, because they're just that amazing. But yeah, no, they have not aged too well. But uh, yeah, Wario Land 4 looks excellent. The sprites look terrific. There's a lot of great, like, subtle animations. Um, I really like the weird character designs. I've noticed that, like, the the little guys, the little basic guys, have this, like, kind of cute look to them. And then the tougher an enemy is, the kind of weirder and stranger they start to look and more demented. And I just thought that was really interesting. This kind of like mix of weird and cute at the same time. Um, And also uh, the graphics are very colorful. There's a lot of variety. Yeah, there's a lot of variety to the locations. And because of that, there's just color everywhere. And each stage just has its own unique personality to it. So I just really appreciate that. It almost feels like a lost Super Nintendo game. Um, but it's kind of like better than a lot of other platformers for the Super Nintendo because it just really understands what made those types of games so great and built upon that. And it's just it just made it this awesome Game Boy Advance game that just looks stunning. And like I said, it looks great on the TV. Um, you know, if you are a little open minded, I think what you're saying could be true, Josh, about the, the darkness and stuff. But if you change your TV settings, that could help a lot. Um, yeah. So. Maybe we'll get it on Switch one day and they'll kind of smooth out those uh, issues. But it's really, like, for me, some I didn't really notice that. I, I thought it looked great. So um, hopefully a lot of other people will, too. Um, but I think another really important component of any video game, as important as the gameplay and the graphics can be, I think the music is also really important and the sounds that you hear in this game. Um, so talk to me, Josh, about your impressions of the music and the sounds that you find in this game. Well, um, not including the weird little disc you find, because um, those are a whole other level of just strange. <laughs> um, there's, there's a decent bit of, like, I don't even want to say what you would expect. Just some weird, like, upbeat tracks that's very fitting for the level it is. Like, one of the earlier ones, which you can go at some of these in any order, but always end up going to the right first. One of the earlier, like, sort of outdoorsy levels, like, there's actually a little bit of singing in the background. Like, there's, like, a woman's voice. Like, yeah. just a la 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 <laughs> Something yeah. like that. Like, it, it just sounds, you know, nice and kind of cheery. Um and then, you know, a split second later, though, you might hit the the button at the end, which is like a big frog that sits off the timer. 
Right. And all of a sudden, you know, it's it literally says hurry up and things are all trippy and weird again. <laughs> yeah. So it, it goes a little bit all over the place. Um, but it, it again, it works. It's not like, uh, again, just because it's sort of related to the Mario series, it's not really like that at all <laughs> in that department. Um, it's it's very, some of it can be very trippy, some of it can be very, like I said, sort of upbeat. But there's always sort of this, like the whole theme of the game anyway, there's like always this little bit of like a looming weirdness <laughs> in the yeah. background. But yeah. it, it, it's it's good. Like it's it's not... It's not irritating or, you know, or just like purposefully bad. It's it's good. Yeah, that's a good point because I I haven't played this version too much, but from what I understand, uh, Super Mario Advance, which is like a port of Super Mario Brothers Two, um, they included a lot of voice clips into that game, and yeah. I've heard that it gets really annoying after a while because it's very common. It so here though it's not like that like it's like you said it's not really annoying it's um kind of tasteful how they did it it's not everywhere it's only at certain points and i've never gotten sick of it because it's very infrequent um and it's interesting because i feel like they included voice clips in this game the the very few that are there just to kind of like maybe show off what the Game Boy Advance is capable of, because this was kind of like a launch window title. So I wonder if that's like the reason why they wanted to do that, just to kind of show off. But it it seems to like that that didn't that wasn't really common during the Game Boy Advance's lifetime. Not a lot of people did that with their games, like included voice clips. So it kind of adds this like extra personality to the game because it was just like this quick little oh, yeah. trend that they started and then they just stopped. <laughs> so I just, yeah, that's a good point, Josh. That's pretty interesting that they did that. Um, but yeah, with the music, it, it's very eclectic and there's a lot of variety. It's all over the place. Like you can't even put it into one type of category. Like with Mario games, a lot of the music's pretty similar. It's very, you know, upbeat and catchy and stuff like that. And sometimes you'll get like a really uh, catchy song. Sometimes you'll get something that's really creepy. Sometimes you'll get something yeah. that's just very atmospheric and also happens to include that woman's voice for some reason. Um, so it's very strange. Uh, if you haven't gotten that impression yet. Um, but it's the, the music and sound design is good overall. Like it's, yeah, it's all over the place, but all of it's really good and tastefully done. And um, I just feel like they kind of like experimented with the music and the style. And it, it just, I get these like artsy vibes with it because i just feel like they're experimenting and it's almost like a indie game in a way because it's just so strange yeah. but i really like it it's it's great it adds to the personality of the game um so let's talk about the uh characters and the enemies and the bosses and stuff um so do you have any favorite enemies or characters in this game yeah so really the bosses stand out more than anything some of the you know the little guys i won't they're not goombas but that's those sort of enemies look a little plain i guess but then like the digger you deeper the more you get into it there's some really strange one in here i'm actually pulling them up as we speak um there is like one dude that is this big i can't really tell what he is but he's like this big gorilla looking thing that throws apples at you <laughs> um there's this guy that has like a little tiki looking mask on that carries a big hammer that basically flattens you to a pancake um, there's this little alligator dude that has like a snorkel on. So there's goofy stuff like that. Um, and then there's, uh, the bosses in particular, I feel like really stand out in this more than anything. Um, I, I, I don't want to, sp- I know it's an older game, but I almost don't want to spoil this for too many people. Cause I feel like a lot of people missed, missed out on this one. But like one I brought up during the plants episode, um, a few weeks ago, uh, that cracked us. He's just yeah. this giant, evil-looking plant. And then there's a cuckoo clock and a teddy bear <laughs> um, with, like, a ghost mouse thing that follows him around and this big cat-bat thing. Right. Like, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. They all look really weird and kind of mildly creepy. Yeah. But it, it works. I really like whoever designed the the characters for this. Yeah, definitely. The the character design really shines with the bosses. They're just unlike anything we've ever seen before, and 
it's crazy that it's for a Game Boy Advance game, and like a Wario game at that, too. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the enemies. I think I've seen th- two or three of them. I didn't get too far in the game just because, like, after a while, it gets a, a little bit difficult. It's nothing crazy, but, um, you know, it definitely challenges you. Um, but, yeah, like, the Cractus, I'm so glad that you included that in, like, our favorite, um, I don't know, what was that? The Nintendo Plants episode? I think that's what yeah. it was. Okay. Um, yeah, that was oh, such a great example. He's just so interesting. He's this weird, like, almost like a Venus flytrap in a way, but he just has this crazy face. It's almost like Rocco's Modern Life or, like, Spongebob when they have those, like, zoomed-in moments and you just see the, these veins and these crazy facial expressions. Um, and that's basically what all of the bosses look like, just yeah. really extreme, like, Ren and Stimpy-looking designs. And it's, like, it's creepy, but it's cool. I don't know. There's just something about it that I really like. Um, but it is creepy. <laughs> uh, yeah, that cat one freaks me out. And something that's interesting that they included in all these bosses is that the more that you harm them, the weirder and crazier they start to look. So, um, yeah, as they get closer to death, they just look more and more insane. And, uh, yeah, it's both cool and terrifying. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, the regular enemies are also pretty interesting. Nothing um, really to talk too much about but i don't know it's like i said before good mix of cute and uh creepy um and uh the next thing i wanted to talk about is just like our favorite moments from the game so are there any special stages that you were uh, a fan of and kind of like stick out in your mind when you think back about this game hmm, i haven't like i said i haven't played through the whole thing in a little while i really want to um but a lot of what really stands out with it um, is, you know, when I think back, is some of that just that weirdness. <laughs> um, a lot of the music that you unlock, um, some of the tracks, the bosses, and things like that really stand out in it. Um, I would say probably one of my favorite parts of it is sort of that that loop, I guess, for the bosses. I like seeing what I can get away with, with like seeing how well I can do with the mini games, and then you know throwing a big item at them. You know, kind of being cheap, but usually it's something funny anyway. And then just seeing how quick I can beat them. Um, I, I sort of have enjoyed that loop, so to speak. Um, and just yeah. being able to fight the bosses themselves are all pretty fun from what I remember. Um, yeah. and, and they do kind of make you feel rushed. But again, it, it works. Like I said, you can't really die. It's just sort of got its own way of challenging you. Yeah, totally. Um, so for my favorite moments, um, I really like the wildflower area, if you remember that one. It's like yeah. with the bees, and that's like where you get stung and stuff. Um, yeah, I just, uh, it had a good mix of things that I like. It's, you know, it was very colorful. I like nature areas, and uh, I just really like the concept of the bee and getting stung and um, kind of choosing how you want to approach the stage. Like, do you want to just go left to right on land, or do you want to get stung by a bee and kind of like navigate in the air and while like still avoiding the spikes that will make you pop if you touch them? Um, because you do access things that you just can't have, um, that you don't have access to. Uh, on the ground without getting stung and being inflated and stuff. So I just thought that was really interesting. And I think like the more that you progress in the game, the more weirder it gets. And I really appreciate that. It does kind of like reward your patience and stuff and kind of like what you talked about before. Like this is a game that does require some thinking and it's, you know, it's not just a typical a uh, Super Mario game where you just go left to right. You have to really think about how you want to navigate the stage, and I really appreciate that. Um, but I also do not like <laughs> Mystic Lake, which is a game or stage I uh, played today, and it's like a mostly underground or underwater level. And oh my god, I was not a fan yeah. of that. <laughs> it's I think not I a big. Remember that. It's not a big deal, but I would just so much rather not have a level dedicated to swimming so and it wasn't really that interesting too it's just like um it's hard to describe like you have these currents that you have to use and you want to get to the right place by choosing the right current to go yeah i I, I actually played that not too long ago had to go to that (laughs) level yep 
Yeah. So that was like the only enjoyable part for me where you have to like kind of navigate that. Um, but I mean, it's still a game I'll play over and over again and even a stage I'll play over again. Um, I also like the ghost pirate that kind of follows you around in the creepy. I don't know what that is, like creepy midnight village stage. Um, it's like this floating ghost that has pretty impressive, like transparency effects for the time. And he just kind of follows you around. He's totally harmless from what I remember, at least. And he just starts stealing all the jewels. So if you like break a block, you better get those jewels right away, or he's gonna swoop in and take them from uh, from you. So it's just this, like this extra challenge to trying to get the highest uh, amount of money that you can get. So yeah. I really like that. And it was also just really fun to discover these different like transformations. So finding the zombie for the first time, and you know seeing what happens when you get stung for the first time was just really fun. And just like figuring out what you are now able to do and not able to do now that you have transformed yourself. So, yeah. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about is the legacy of Wario Land 4. Um, I think that by now a lot of people can kind of gather our impressions. But, um, Josh, what are your like final and uh, overall impressions of Wario Land 4? Um, well, one thing I actually did want to bring up before we kind of get too far into shutting it down um is do you remember the wario land 4 website no not at all uh, by any chance okay I, th I think it was welcome to greedsville i think from my research here at least <laughs> what i remember um but and, and i just tried to go to it but uh my phone wanted to get a bunch of spam when i did that so i closed out of it <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, I actually pulled up a little something here. I might share it to the Facebook page or something. Um, a guy had done a lot of research on it. It's Wario at Hangout up in the top corner of the screen and basically talk you through this little town. You could click on things, and there was a theater you could go in and watch, like, clips and stuff from, you know, Wario Land 4 or listen to music. There was a school where you could read an old Mario versus Wario comic, take a test on, about Wario Land 4, all this goofy stuff. And I just I vaguely remember going back and visiting that and I came across it and just kind of wanted to bring that up. Um, a lot of those weird old Nintendo websites were pretty cool back then. Um, I don't feel like they're as interesting now. They're all sort of the same thing. Yeah, but, they're all like very like marketing based, whereas before it was just yeah. like, let's have fun with this. <laughs> I just thought that was cool. Just one little tidbit of something I remember. But Anyhow, yeah, with, with, I guess, the whole legacy of it, I mean, this game is 20 years old now, so it, it really sucks to think about that and realize we've only had one Wario Land game since then on the Wii, and I don't feel like it really moved the needle. Um, well, there's also, like, the crappier ones that we try to forget, like the Master of Disguise, I think it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah. We don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I really... Excuse me, I would really like to see that series come back. And I don't know why they just kind of let it die off. I don't know if it wasn't selling well or if the Wii one was sort of the last. Nah, this didn't do much, so we're just going to leave it alone. But I, I think, you know, I think there's some really good quality with the concept alone there. And I think 4 was the best of it. Um, I, I hope if they ever bring back Game Boy Advance games to like the Switch, like they did the Wii U, I don't know why they still haven't done it on the Switch. But anyhow, I always hope it is one of those that is sort of a staple. Like when they bring back Super Nintendo games, they always bring back Mario World and not, you know, I love that game. And they always bring back like A Link to the Past and Super Metroid. I hope this is sort of one of those titles for the Game Boy Advance. Like when you think of the Game Boy Advance, this is one of the, the top ones. Um, and I, I think that's pretty much holds true for a lot of people. Um, yeah. I just, uh, you know, I hope they don't let it go to waste and sort of just fall into <laughs> history and no real way to actually still play it. Yeah, I wonder how the games have sold. Uh, honestly, I can't imagine that they've been selling too well. And I don't really think that it's because they're bad games. It's just that, right. A, they're hard to sell because they're so strange and stuff. And it's like, who is this really for? But also the quality of them have been like all over the place they keep giving these games to other developers um and especially the last one that was just awful i think that was like by artoon who made um new yoshi's island or whatever that was so uh, or, or or our zest maybe i don't know they're very similar with like their yeah. 
mediocre quality. Um, <laughs> so unfortunately, that's who we had last time, and it seems like Master of Disguise just didn't really know what it was doing. Um, I don't know. It, it looks good. Like, the graphics look pretty good. I haven't played it myself, but it just seems like they just didn't know how to really add something new and good to the the Wario franchise, unfortunately. Um, Wario Land Shake It is great, but, you know, kind of like what Josh and I said, I just, I don't remember it. (laughs) It was beautiful, but I don't remember what I did. Um, It was probably just really harmless and not that exciting. Like, maybe just the graphics were interesting and that's all that was great about them, but, or great about the title. But, uh, yeah, like, Wario has so much personality and and is such a great asset to the games that he stars in, and I really miss that, and I think that we could really use that now. At the same time, though, like I feel like the personality that he has to offer is a little less interesting now that we have like indies because I feel like indies really lean into like weirdness, and uh, I guess that's what we have to rely on for now. But um, when it comes to the Wario Land games and Wario Land 4, I feel like these are just really great spin-offs of the Super Mario Brothers franchise, kind of like Yoshi's Island in a way. Um, it's it it just stands on its own. Like yeah, it's a spin-off, but it just it really does stand on its own, and it's it has its own interesting qualities and has a good balance of everything that I like. Where you kind of explore, kind of like a Metroidvania, and then when you get to the end of the stage, there's this timed portion where you kind of have to rush and get back to the beginning. But as you go back you're navigating through this like different type of level and you you even have to explore within that time too and i just don't think any other games have something like that i just think that's so interesting so i hope that they do bring this uh series back and find a way to sell it um perhaps we're the market for it just 30 somethings who are nostalgic (laughs) for this type of stuff and hey lean into it if you can Um, Yeah, I just really appreciate that they took chances with this type of game and they got really weird and funny with it and it's just really clear that the developers had a fun time making it. So um, I'm just glad that it exists and kind of like what you said, Josh, I hope that people have access to it sometime soon because it it really is a gem. Um, One one way that people can get it is, like I mentioned before, on the Wii U eShop. It is still available but probably will not be for much longer. Um, and I also hope that it becomes available on the Switch. Um, I don't know what's going on with like them bringing these games over. Maybe it's emulation or rights or what, but um, they got to do it, and I feel like they will um, sometime soon. Um, so, Josh, since E3 is coming next week, how would you feel if they announced a Wario game? Would you be psyched for it or just like, eh, okay, that's cool? Oh, yeah, I'd definitely be happy for it. It's been so long since I uh, even shake it at this point. Um, I, and I, I feel like I've seen a bit of an outcry for it. And, that, you know, that, that makes me does make me happy to see that, that, you know, there is some fans out there that are, have been looking for it, along with the F-Zeros, like, like myself, and, you yeah. know, Earthbounds and all of that sort of thing. Um, I'm glad to see it in that mix. You know, I don't know if that means anything, but, you know, I I, I would definitely be happy to see it I'd, sometimes it's good to have just a good solid platformer to add to the mix to to you know where they usually like to come out with these bigger triple a things something like that is kind of refreshing yeah <laughs> in its exactly. own way yeah we know that we like platformers but it gets a little samey with a lot of these games like the soup new super mario brothers and you know mario maker is great and, and great in its own way but uh, a, like you said, a good way of kind of mixing it up is through the Wario franchise that has so much unique characteristics to offer. So, yep, um, I guess that summarizes our thoughts. So th- thank you, everyone, for listening. We hope you had a great time listening to this episode. We had a great time making it. Uh, so, Josh, can you tell our listeners how they can find us? Sure. Um, you can always find us on Facebook, uh, Nintendo Nostalgia. Um, on Twitter, we are at Nintendo underscore uh, NOS, the same on Instagram. And like I mentioned before, we recently made a TikTok page. Um, I put a few fun things up there. So if you're into that, go check that out. It's just a little something fun. Thought we'd give it a shot on the side. 
I did mention it already as well on Facebook. We have the group on there that we're usually pretty active in. So check us out there. Also, if uh, any of you guys wanted to leave us a voicemail, you can do so at 317-969-5690. And you can send us an email with any of your thoughts, any game-related thoughts that you wanted to share at Nintendo Nostalgia in at gmail.com and we're going to leave all this stuff in the episode's description for you just in case but thank you guys again very much and we'll catch you in the next episode bye everyone bye (laughs) something like that like i'm gonna try to say it please do it's (laughs) every woe shatane hakasi (laughs) Get hyped for E3. I can't believe that's next week, so get hyped. I'm really excited.